this out. Hey everybody, I'm Giles and this is JDM World. Today, we've got episode six of Giles' journey for you. And in this episode, we're gonna take a look at setting up these ICH5s from Stark Sound. So we're gonna talk about how we set them up in the room, meaning what they look like on the front sound stage and, and how far apart I have them and the toe in and that kind of stuff. Also, what we do for the cabling and the switches on the back, because dude, switches, right? That's fun. <laughs> Um, and then we're gonna get into the measurements and we're gonna look and see how these respond inside of the room. And this is really gonna be just looking at these without any subwoofer support. So we'll get REW out and, and fire that up and see how low they go. Maybe that's important um, in a home theater environment, not so much, but in two channel world, super important, right? Especially for those of you that aren't really enthusiastic about using subwoofers. Now I am, but I know that that's a personal taste and a lot of people want a tower um, or whatever kind of speaker that can do it all for them so that they don't have to use DSP and these other things. So we'll take a look and see what the frequency response looks like. Now with a passive radiator on this guy, I'm hoping it's pretty low, but we'll find out. Now, all that being said, we have some work that we have to do first and that is getting REW set up in this room. I had been running that on a laptop, but I decided, you know what? I'm gonna be doing this a lot, so let's put a dedicated machine in. So I pulled out a PC, uh, some parts, and put together a HTPC, or a home theater PC, and we'll take a look at that real quick, and I'll show you what that's gonna be doing, and some of the future plans for that, that'll be for videos down the line. So once we get done with the sound part of this, we're gonna be looking at stuff like projection and screens and media players, and we'll maybe even mix some of that in through the, through the journey. But uh, today, these guys, measurements, and let's start out by taking a quick look at that PC. So this is the cabinet that I'm using in my home theater, and it's filled up with quite a bit of gear. But what I wanna point out is the new item, and that's this home theater PC here at the top. Now, this is gonna run REW, but it also has a number of other uh, functions. So I'm gonna install Rune on this. It also um, is connected down, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's a uh, mini DSP 2x4 HD in there. That guy's cabled up on the backside via um, USB so that I'm able to use this to control that, uh, that crossover without having to pull out a laptop and connect it. Now this guy is connected back to the AVR and the AVR is another item that we're gonna have to address at some point in the near future. Um, it's connected via HDMI, but also um, via a pair of RCA cables so that I can do some two channel stuff out of that box if I want to. So the important part today to understand is that this is where we're gonna do our measurements with REW and we'll be plugging in on the front of the, uh, of the chassis here with a I think it's a U-Mic 1, and that's gonna be the microphone that we use, and I've got a wireless keyboard plugged in, and that's gonna allow us to control it. So we'll film um, with a camera mounted pointing at the projection screen, so I'm not gonna try and do a screen capture. I think it's a little more interesting when you can actually see the, the real screen, and that's how we're gonna capture our measurements for the day. Now let's talk a little bit about speaker placement, and particularly the front sound stage. Today, we're looking at the towers, and we're gonna talk about how these fit into a room uh, with a projection screen center and surround channels. So uh, I'm building a nine channel bed layer in this room, and there are particular specifications from Atmos of how you set this up. And those are the specifications that I'm going to do my best to stick to. Every room has compromises, and this one is gonna be no different. But on the front sound stage, I can get pretty dang close to what it recommends. So. If you look at the specification, um, it calls for a specific geometry in the front of the room. So if you draw a line through the center of the room, kind of from your projector through the screen, the center channel is gonna fall at zero degrees offset from that line directly in front of you as you look at the screen. Now, your left uh, front and your right front, those can be anywhere from 22 degrees, about right here, to 30 degrees, which is right about here. Now. You need to do a little geometry to figure out exactly what your offset is and what the angles are. But if you remember something called an equilateral triangle, that means that all the legs of the triangle are the same length. And when you have a triangle with three uh, equal length uh, edges, 
that means that the three angles are each 60 degrees. So if you take that 30 degrees offset on either side from the front uh, viewing angle and add those up, you get 60 degrees. So if you can make the distance the same from your viewing area as between your two speakers, then you know you've got 60 degrees. Now, in my room, it's 123 and a half inches between the two speakers and just shy of 122 inches back to where my head is for the most part in the listening position. Now, I think that's gonna cause me to have slightly larger than 60 degrees, maybe 61 to 62 degrees, but that's almost right on the spec. Now, I could slide these in just a little bit, but they start encroaching on the screen here and I really don't wanna do that. So for me, this has worked out pretty well. So I'm right at the edge of the 60 degrees. And the other thing to think about is the toe in, right? So this is the way that the speaker points back toward your listening position. There are lots of different philosophies of how to point your speakers or how to toe them in. Uh, some people point directly back to the listening position and they said that's the best for imaging for two channel. Some people will make them parallel to the sidewalls and pretty much off axis for everyone in the seating area. I'm not a big fan of that. Now, what I've decided on for now is that I'm pointing the left and right, um, not directly to the center, but offset from the center. So uh, if, if you had three people sitting on your sofa, you're gonna point, the, uh, the left speaker is gonna point toward the left person and the right speaker is pointing toward the right person. And while there's nothing pointing directly at the person in the middle, the, the sweet spot is almost on axis for both of the speakers. So that's what I've elected to do now. Uh, I would recommend that you play with this in your environment and see what works best. But for, for me, this is what I'm doing today. Now we're gonna talk about the cabling and the switch configuration for the speaker. So the speaker has the capability of being bi-wired or bi-amped. I, I, I do not elect to do that. So I'm gonna connect a single pair of speaker wire to the bottom terminals and these jumpers will then power everything else. This is Sewell Direct Silverback cabling. Um, this is what I've chosen to use for pretty much the whole theater uh, from a speaker, speaker cable point of view. And, and I really love these. these. These are really gorgeous and they do a really great job. These banana plugs will plug right in. And uh, I think the, the silver is a, a good offset with the gold of the binding posts. Now, once you get your cabling in place, and you could cable up here if you want to, it doesn't make any difference, right? Uh, the binding posts uh, will carry the, the signal over these jumpers up or down, it doesn't matter. Now, you then have to select how you wanna deal with your, uh, your switches. So you've got a trouble switch, and this is gonna give you either minus two plus two or no attenuation on your uh, trouble frequencies. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the, uh, what this is impacting um, from a frequency response. But for me, I, I keep this right in the middle and that's what they call the home theater setting, right? Um, now, if you wanna do uh, music, they've got a minus two. And then if you're behind an acoustic uh, screen, an AT screen, they suggest doing the plus two setting. But for us, since these are uh, primarily going to be home theater, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the neutral position. Um, now, when I do decide to listen to two channel, I'll just come back here and pop it over, but they'll sit in the neutral position um, whenever I'm watching movies. Now on this side, you've got your base boundary adjustment. Um, the closer you are to a wall, um, the more likely you will need to use this. And I am pretty close myself. However, I'm gonna leave this into the, in the normal position because for these speakers, the vast majority of the time, I'm gonna have these crossed over at 80 hertz um, in, uh, in home theater mode, right? And all of that uh, LFE and uh, low base information from the main channels is gonna be aggregated and sent out via DSP to the subwoofers. Now, again, if I decide I wanna listen in pure two channel mode, uh, you know, one thing that I can do to tweak the sound a little bit is come up pump this over to boundary and put this into minus two for music. And that would be my two channel listening mode. So that covers uh, the cabling with our silverbacks um, and the switch positions on the start speakers. Now let's take a look at some measurements. So I'm actually just shooting my projector screen. So it's a little lo-fi, but it's okay. Um, what we've done here is I've set the uh, switches on the back of this set of speakers, so they're both here, uh, to no boundary with uh, zero dB 
on the tweeter setting. So that's what that red line is. And we're in pure direct mode. So there's no DSP, um, there is no subwoofer. The only two speakers that are playing are the, uh, the those two towers. So there's nothing else going on here except for those speakers. So you can see the things are pretty flat. Um, the low end response is pretty shockingly good, I think on these guys. Um, you don't see, you know, like 30 hertz and it just drops way out. So apparently those th three eighths and the 12 inch passive radiator are, uh, are doing a little bit of uh, work for us there. Now I'm powering this off of the uh, Stark Sound A7. So it's getting lots of juice um, if it needs it. Um, and, uh, you know, it only needs it when you turn it up and that's all class A. But this is, like I said, with the boundary set to zero and uh, tweeter, uh, Boundary set off, tweeter set zero, and this thing's playing up above 20,000 uh, hertz all the way up to almost uh, 25 kilohertz. So that's pretty cool. Now, what I've done here is set the tweeter setting to plus two dB, and I reran the measurement. And as you can see, it bumps up the uh, the high end starting at 5,000, I guess. And then uh, I also went ahead and clicked on the minus two decibel. So I took those two switches that you saw earlier and moved to minus two here, and that's what you see in the blue. So that does attenuate that down a little bit for us. So you can uh, absolutely control this. Now, uh, from here, I went and uh, flipped on the boundary setting and remeasured. And you'll see us when we're gonna click this orange on, and you can see that when you turn the boundary setting, set, setting from normal to on to boundary, it uh, starting at maybe a hundred Hertz, maybe a little bit higher. It drops things down by three-ish or four-ish decibel there as well. Um, and uh, I went through and I did that for all of the uh, different setting combinations. Uh, so you can go through and, and look and see. And no matter what the, the mix is, there's nothing weird with the uh, crossovers where things don't work like they're supposed to if you have any particular combination of settings. And finally, the last thing is to see if they can play loud. So I've got a little uh, sweet child of mine going on here and uh, I'm just pumping this up. I'm gonna see if I can make it touch 105. Um, and uh, it absolutely gets up there, no problem. I had quite a bit more room to go, but it was really, really loud already. <laughs> so um, there's no problem hitting reference levels with these guys whatsoever. So. Um, no worries from that point of view. So thanks for watching episode six. I'm super excited about these speakers and the more I listen to them, the more I like them. And after all the measurements and everything that's gone into this video, I'm even more impressed than I was before. Um, if you ever wanna hear them and you're in Colorado, look me up, I'd love to give you a tour. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed this or even if you hated it, please like it and subscribe. And as always, bring all your family and have them sub uh, subscribe as well. See you again in episode seven.